fifth graders. Welcome to our technology class. We're on week 38. So here's what it's looking like. We're going to get through two coding lessons today. And then next week, we'll have, I think, the last two. And I'm thinking about just counting them as like bonus. Like if you do them, you can get extra points. So if you need to like boost your grade, because since it's really cutting it close to the end of the quarter, I don't want to make like a mandatory thing that's to do. I'm trying to make your lives easier, right? And if you haven't been keeping up, then that's your own fault. Not my fault. I gave you guys plenty of time. So if you didn't keep up, you need to be on it, right? And you know that you get 10 points every week that it's late. So make sure that you catch up this week, okay? Um, all right, so we are, we ended with lesson 12. We did the AI for oceans last week. So we're gonna skip lesson 13 and 14 because those are like unplugged lessons and we're not really able to do those. So we're going to move right into lesson 15. We're doing four loops with B and then we're doing lesson 16, okay? So I'll go through it with you guys. Um, and I might actually, for the sake of doing this quickly, hang on a minute. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of just move through it with the answers already in there just, and I'll go through it with you guys. And then that way it will move a lot faster since we're going through two of them. And I don't want this to be like this super long video because that's hard to follow, right? Okay, so here we go. Collect the nectar from each flower using the fewest blocks possible. So remember, there's our flowers. We have to move forward and get nectar. So we can see we're doing it one, two, three, four, five times. So repeat five times, move forward, get nectar. So if I run it, our bee will perfectly get all the nectar. Woohoo! Let's take a look at the next one. Our next one, write the code to help the bee collect all of the nectar. You will need a lot of blocks for this challenge, but we'll learn an easier way in the next puzzle. So this one is tricky because if you notice, you need one nectar here, two, three, four, five. So you have to keep doing them separately. So you're moving forward and you're getting nectar and then you're moving forward and you're getting nectar two times. Then you're moving forward and you're getting it three times, moving forward, getting it four times, moving forward, getting it five times. So we use the repeat block, repeat three times, four times, five times. And then for the other ones, we just put the blocks in separately. So let's have. Okay, now let's watch this video about four loops. Woohoo! So when you use a repeat block to loop your code, how does the computer know when it's repeated enough times? The repeat block is actually hiding a more sophisticated piece of code called a for loop, which counts from a starting value up to an ending value by a specific increment. So for example, a repeat three block counts from one to three by one, and every time it counts, it runs the code inside the loop. The for loop knows how many times it has run by using a counter variable that is set to the starting value at the beginning of the loop and has the increment added to it each time the loop is run. As soon as the counter variable is greater than the ending value, the loop stops running. So the benefit of using a real for loop instead of the repeat block is that you can actually see the counter variable and use it in your loop. So for example, if I have a series of flowers and the first one has one nectar, the second one has two nectars, and the third one has three, I can use the for loop to tell the bee to collect counter nectars each time, which would collect one at the first flower, two at the second, and three at the third. Also, in a for loop, you can increment the counter by a number other than one each time. You can potentially count by twos, fours, or even amount that changes every time through. Okay, so let's move on. So we're continuing now. So now we're going to actually get to take a look at this. So in this one, it says, the use of the for loop makes this puzzle a lot easier. So let's look at it. It says the counter is starting at one and going. it's going to four by one. So you're moving forward and then you're repeating the counter. So I wonder if it's going up and then, so it's going to be starting at one and then it's going up again, up again, 
up again, and then up again. So it looks like they would get all of it. So the bee will move forward and collect all the nectar from every flower. Let's try that one and see what happens. Oh, whoops, whoops, made a mistake. Oh wait, no, we didn't make a mistake. He actually did. Okay, good, perfect. Um, okay, so now we really want to give this a try, okay? Okay, so we get out our counter block, so four counter. We know we're going from one to seven and we're counting up by one and we're moving forward and we're repeating counter and then get nectar. So these are like the main blocks that you're using. So if we do this, the bee will go to each one and with each move, increase an extra one, right? Because the counter is going up by one. And then that's allowing the bee to collect all of the nectar from each of the flowers. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. You can use a for loop to count down. So you could even do it counting down. Try gathering this nectar by counting down from five to one by one. So in this example, we're going five, four, three, two, one. So we're, they counter from five to one. So we're putting it in that way, going by one. Move forward, repeat counter, get nectar. So let's say. Woohoo! Great job, it worked. The last number in your for loop is called the increment. Each time the loop is run, the counter variable changes by the value of the increment. Try collecting these flowers using an increment of two. So we're going from one to seven, but this time, if you notice here, the count by block is two. Why? Because it's one, three, five, seven. We're going up by two. So we're same blocks, move forward, repeat counter, get nectar, except you're counting by two. All right. You've got this. What should your increment be to collect three, six, nine, 12, 15 nectar? So we're counting by three, right? So we're going from three to 15. So you put that in three to 15, we're counting by three. And the thing about this one is a little bit extra step because we're going in a step motion. So we're moving forward, turning right, moving forward, turning left and repeating the counter and getting nectar. So there goes our B. Okay, level nine. Use the counter variable twice to solve this puzzle. We're going from one to three. Okay, so the thing about it is we're going from one to three, we're going up by one. We just have to add in um, repeat counter and move forward and then repeat counter and get nectar because there's a little bit of a space here. They're not like in every one. So we have to kind of tell the computer to, to separate. And Okay, so pretty much you're just repeating the same thing using the counter block. Okay, now let's combine counter variable with a math block. How can you use the counter variable to navigate this garden with the fewest number of blocks possible? So counter from one to five, okay, because, um, and we're counting by one, and then we're turning left and we're moving forward. And so it says counter times three. Why are we doing that? I wonder, why are we doing that? You have to take a look at your numbers. You have three, six, nine, 12, 15, right? So do you see how um, that would make sense to repeat times three, right? To be able to three times three, right? And then you would go up and then you'd be at six, right? So you just, uh, we're just kind of in uh, adding in math to it, right? And then that's helping us to be able to figure out um, how many times we would be able to get around to it. So hopefully that makes sense. Otherwise you can just use the code, right? So we're going from three, we're adding one, two, three, we're getting six, we're adding one, two, three, we're getting nine, one, two, three. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, right? 
So we're just going up by threes. So your counter times three. Okay, so let's run it. Perfect, great job. This one's a challenge puzzle. If you wanna skip it, you can. It's no big deal. These They get very challenging. Um, this one is, let's take a look at it. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to be going. Uh, gotta go to 14, 10, six, two. So it's our it counters going from 14 to two. Then we're doing, um, I can't even see what that is. Okay. <sighs> Let's just skip that one. I just moved to the next one. Okay, so this one is like a step motion again. So you do have to remember to turn left, move forward, turn right, move forward. Those are the blocks in there. We're going from 15 to three. And we're looking here, counting down by three. So by three. And then repeat nectar, get and repeat counter, get nectar. So this is the increment is subtracted from your counter variable by three. Okay. All right. Um, so now I'm going to move on to lesson 16 now because I was trying to include them both in here. And I was also kind of going at it pretty fast. So sorry about that. Um, okay. So let's learn about the for loop now. So when you use a repeat block to loop your code, how does the computer know when it's repeated enough times? The repeat block is actually hiding a more sophisticated piece of code called a for loop, which counts from a starting value up to an ending value by a specific increment. So for example, a repeat three block counts from one to three by one, and every time it counts, it runs the code inside the loop. The for loop knows how many times it has run by using a counter variable that is set to the starting value at the beginning of the loop and has the increment added to it each time the loop is run. As soon as the counter variable is greater than the ending value, the loop stops running. So the benefit of using a real for loop instead of the repeat block is that you can actually see the counter variable and use it in your loop. Okay, so let's go in now to here and try out the for loop. And let's see. Um, so this is a free play. So you can go in, you can try it, you can see what you can create with that. Um, and then I'm just going to skip ahead. So whatever shape you might want to draw, just come up with an idea that you might be interested in. Okay. Okay, so now, um, now in this one, it says use a repeat loop inside of a for loop to create this stack of triangles that goes from 50 pixels to 100 pixels. So they're using for the counter, they're saying going from 50 to 100, counting by 10, repeating three times since it's a triangle, move forward by counter pixels, and turn left by 120. So then there's believing this is going to create a triangle. So I think I might have mentioned to you guys, if you're interested in art and you ever want to be a graphic designer, they do have to know how to do a lot of code um, to be able to work with this. So maybe that might be something you're interested in. Okay, let's try the next one. Create these triangles that go from 20 pixel sides to 200 pixel sides, where each triangle is 20 pixels larger than the last. So they tell you going from 20 to 200, Count them by 20. I'm just they're literally plugging in the numbers. You know, it's three times because it's three sides of the triangle, moving forward by the counter and turning left 120. So now I wonder if I can just speed up the speed of this so we don't have to be there too long. Woo, look at that. That was like a speedster triangle. Okay, let's go to level five. These squares start at 15 pixels. The largest is 300 pixels and each square is 15 pixels larger than the last. So we're going from 15 to 300 and we're counting by 15. 
So again, it's a square. So we're going four times, right? And we're moving forward by counter pixels and we're turning left by 90 because we're creating small squares and then bigger squares. Oh, here, I like to make it really fast. Ready? It's going to do it so quickly. Woo! Look at that! Woo so cool. Just one little change to the code from the last image can create this drawing. Can you figure out what that change is? Hint, you need to remove something. Hmm. So we're going from 15 to 300, counting by 15. We're moving forward by counter and we're turning left 90 degrees. So let's try it out now. Let's see, I'm gonna do it. Whoa, look at that cool square. Really neat looking. If you turn a little bit more or less than you normally would for a shape, it creates a neat effect. Recreate your code from the last level, but turn 89 degrees to create this twisted square spiral. So we're going from 15 to 300, counting by 15, moving forward by counter pixels and turning left by 89 degrees. So let's try it out. And look at that beautiful triangle. Make three small changes to the code from the last level to get this. For the count, uh, four counter from 15 to 300, count by two, move forward by counter, and then turn right by 89. And we're setting the width to one. And we, we also set a color. So look how beautiful this is going to be. Wow, look at that. If any of you guys are ever interested in just creating art, code.org has an art an artist um, one that you can just go in and you can just do projects in there and it's a lot of fun. So if you're looking for something, um, you know, to use your brain with technology instead of just staring at, you know, YouTube videos, you could totally create art and then you use your brain. Okay, take the angle down to 72 degrees to get a spiral pentagon. So we set our color, set our width, our four counter from 15 to 300 counting by two, Moving forward by counter, turning right by 72. Oh, this is going to look amazing. Wow, that is beautiful. I love that. All right, next one is a free play. So I'll let you guys, um, it just says use the counter um, uh, to uh, the, create the hexagon. So they created it by doing 60 degree turns and they made it into this beautiful picture here. So how nice is that? Um, and then number 10, um, they're asking about what will happen. And then number 11 is a free play. So this is really, you could just create whatever you want in there. It's really up to you. So make a beautiful picture. You know, if, after you press finish, there's like a link. You can even share it too. So if you want to like share it with someone, that would be fun. Okay, so I know I kind of went quickly, but just for the sake of time. So please make sure that you um, get through lesson 15 and 16. And um, if you did not do your typing, there was only one typing lesson this quarter, jokes and laughs in the typing.com account. Please make sure you do it because it actually is worth quite a bit because we only had the one typing. And the second step test is also worth quite a bit because there was only one second step. Um, thing in the in the quarter. So please make sure to take the test. Remember, it's the Google link to the test. So do those two things if you haven't done them already. And then you can do your coding and um, just catch up if you're behind. Okay. All right. And you know, you're welcome to come at your lunch. You can work on things if you need to. All right. Bye, guys.